what I wanted to talk about today is uh, Reynolds transport theorem. So if you remember, we talked about Lagrangian and Eulerian description of the uh, fluid flow. And Lagrangian description is when we uh, write the conservation laws, uh, mass, momentum, and energy for uh, a material volume, collection of the physical uh, fluid particles that are moving through space. And the Eulerian uh, or spatial description is uh, when we write this uh, or describe the conservation laws for a point in space or a volume that's fixed in space and observe material flowing through it. The Reynolds transport theorem allows us to reconcile these two descriptions. And you can actually uh, see uh, how the material and spatial descriptions come together if you allow uh, the two volumes coincide at a given uh, time instant. So the, uh, the tool that allows us to do this, and this is where the equations are actually coming from. You, you would have something equal to another. And uh, this tool is called Reynolds Transport Theorem. So if we consider a control volume that's fixed in space, so let's call this um, V, we have several V notations today. We call this V with the uh, line through this, just to distinguish from material volume. And the S is the control surface that inscribes this volume. And let, let us assume that at point, at the current time instant, T, there is a material volume that occupies this control volume V exactly. So it just coincides with this. Uh, let's say that at some prior time instant, this material volume was at another location. Maybe it was distorted a little bit. Um, so something like this. Uh, so this is the same physical collection of fluid particles. Um, so I, this is V at uh, say t minus delta t. And then at a later time instant, this collection of fluid particles flies through and moves elsewhere, gets further distorted maybe uh, under the, all the forces that are acting upon it. So it's V um, and I'll put t plus delta t as a sub subscript here. Um, so that's, uh, that's the setup. So let's consider that this uh, material volume has some property B. And B uh, can be, for our purposes, uh, mass, momentum, or energy. If we consider now the change that's happening to the material volume, uh, we can relate it to the change that's uh, happening uh, to the control volume. Change of this property B over the material volume. And you can see that this is the change that happens locally, change with respect to time in the control volume V, what occurs in the control volume itself, plus the flux through the surface of the control volume. So this is the surface integral uh, over S of that property B uh, that's brought into the volume or actually brought out of the volume by the flow velocity. So the first term on the right is the change, uh, change of this property B uh, in the control volume itself. And the, the second term on the right is the flux of B across the surface of the control volume. Right, so that, uh, that is the premise. So this allows us to formulate equations. This is what uh, the equations are coming from. Um, this is really fundamental. Uh, first principles applied to the collection of the particles and the location in space. And we can equate the changes in this two different ways of looking at the fluid system. And this is where the equations are falling out. So this is uh, 
foundation of the analytical approach. Um, let's apply this to conservation of mass, and this would be uh, this would be our exercise for today. Um, so let uh, b uh, be mass. Uh, well, actually, mass per unit volume. So this is de density. And then let's just write the Reynolds transport theorem for that. So it would be uh, capital D by dt uh, of integral over the material volume of uh, mass per unit volume times the differential volume element uh, equals on the right hand side of oh, d by dt of integral with respect to the control volume spatial uh, notation here, uh, rho dv uh, plus flux across the control surface of rho times v, which is fluid velocity dA. How is this useful? Uh, well, it's not immediately useful unless we recall that we want to express conservation of mass from physical principles we know that the mass in our system should be conserved and this is by the way this is where we're already starting to make some assumptions so we kind of lose generality a little bit at this stage uh, when we say that the total change of mass is equal to zero we are assuming that there is no nuclear reaction so we're not converting mass to to energy directly but uh, this is fine for the scope of this course, so nothing like that is happening. So if this is what we want to express, that means that the term on the left is equal to zero, we can just write, uh, rewrite the equation above. The first term is rate of change of mass inside the control volume, and the second term is the net flux of mass through the control surface. This is a little bit more insightful, so these two terms um, balance each other, uh, but it would be nice if we had both integrals in terms of, say, volume integrals rather than one surface, one volume. We could do that in, in one of the previous uh, lectures, we talked about Gauss's divergence theorem. So we can use that to convert the surface integral into a volume integral. So more specifically, uh, the surface integral of rho VDA um, is equal to the volume integral of the del rho V. So this is the second term in the equation above. We can substitute and combine them under this single integral sign. Now, the control volume uh, is an arbitrary thing. We, we made no assumptions when we started setting it up uh, of what that should be. So, therefore, this last expression, it should hold for any control volume. And that's only possible when the integrant is always zero. And this is the continuity equation. So obviously represents conservation of mass and notice that this is very general. Uh, density doesn't have to be a constant so it's valid for compressible flows. Um, it's under both derivatives, both derivatives with respect to space, the del operator, and the derivative with respect to time. That's a very general and simple looking equation but let's consider a more special case. Uh, if um, if the flow is incompressible, the density is constant, then first term on the left in the continuity equation, d rho dt is equal to zero, um, obviously. And this is not, by the way, this is not because the flow is steady. This term drops out because, um, because of incompressibility. And then the equation becomes del of rho v equals zero, uh, the uh, density can be taken out of the derivatives and divided through by that and the equation becomes del v equals to zero. So it's a much simpler uh, and very elegant form of the equation. So in this is the vector form. 
um, in terms of Cartesian coordinates, for example, this is du dx plus dv dy plus dw dz equals zero. So this is the continuity for um, incompressible flow. Again, note that it's, uh, it's for an incompressible flow that's not necessarily steady. Um, the time doesn't appear in this equation, but you cannot really tell whether the flow is steady or unsteady because u, v, and w can be functions of time as well. So that's, um, that's the illustration. So that's the main um, use of the Reynolds transport theorem. It allows us to set up the fundamental equations, the conservation laws, uh, in terms of both spatial and material uh, point of view. Um, so to reconcile these two descriptions and formulate the governing equations in the process.